G'day folks, Scott here. Today I'm reviewing Avengers Endgame. So I saw Avengers Endgame last night. I slept on it. Uh, it's a lot to absorb. For the beginning of this review, 100% spoiler free, just reaction. If you're invested in the Marvel Universe and you're, you know, 21 movies deep, um, you... It's inevitable that you're going to see this. I can't imagine you have any doubts. You know, it's pretty rare for Marvel to fuck up a movie. Uh, so, yeah, go see it. I'm surprised if you're not there already or saw it last night. Um, it won't disappoint you. If you're someone who's just sort of late on the bandwagon um, and you're not up with all those movies, I think there may be a very different movie in store for you. Uh, one of my friends who you may have seen one of our uh, retro reviews... The only Marvel movies he's seen, I think, were maybe one of the Iron Mans, the Guardians of the Galaxies, and then he jumped all the way to Infinity War. And it baffled me how he was going to go with Infinity War, but he really liked it. This one is vastly more a fan service looking back and tying up everything. And I think a lot of it's going to be lost on him, but, you know, that's his bad. Um, I don't think I really need to say much more on that front, you know, like, go see it. The hype is immense. Uh, quickly, me being no trailer guy, I was really impressed last night when I came home and watched trailers and they literally spoiled nothing. They gave away no st story elements or really anything at all. It was just a reflective sort of flashback thing. And I applaud them for that. Um, good on them. Because Star Wars and a whole bunch of other movies really need to learn the lesson which I've been harping on about ages about divulging story and giving away too much as they go forward. So, uh, yeah, I applaud them for that. The um, trailers did not ruin the movie. Uh, so, I guess I'm going to have to go into spoilers here. Um, so, you know, five, four, three, two, one. Here's all spoilers. You've been warned. I'm going to ruin things. You don't want to see this if you haven't seen the movie. I don't really even know where to start with this. Um, so much happened. Three hour and two minute running time. There's probably stuff I've already forgotten. I definitely, definitely going to go see it again. Um, firstly, the opening or the opening sort of 10, 15 minutes. It's hard to say how long these things went for because uh, I refused to look at my watch throughout it. I didn't want to see, oh, it's been two and a half hours now. I know there's only 32 minutes left. Like, so the opening where they sort of had a quick catch up and everything, um, and led to them finding out where Thanos was and going for the confrontation before the credit kind of thing um, was quite amazing. I didn't know where this... I mean, everyone's been, where's this movie going to go? After the end of uh, Infinity War, it wasn't a clear path to how they're going to resolve the situation, and I love it for that. So, you know, when the movie began with them going to that little hut where Thanos ended the last movie with, um, and a quick shot of him, you know, sort of limping his way through a field and picking some fruit and limping his way up a staircase and looking kind of humbled and casual clothes and his armor from the previous movie on like a monument out the front yard and that. Um, very, yeah, very humbled. And I was like, oh, what's up here? Um, you know, obviously they divulge why he was in that, uh, you know, that state, but to have them show up and confront him and basically beat the shit out of him and kill him, I was like, what the hell, you know, literally beheading him. Um, I was like, I, I just can't comprehend where this movie's going to go. Then doing, you know, opening thing and then, uh, five years later and everyone's off doing their own thing. I was like... I can't read where this movie's gonna go. On, go gonna go. I was really like stumbling for what's gonna happen. Are they gonna introduce a new bad guy? Like I don't get it. What's going on? And and again, this is a testament to amazing writing and forethought and them structuring a story that isn't predictable. Um, and then have you know Ant Man come out of the the machine, the quantum whatever it was machine from the end of. Ant-Man and Wasp and you know him start toying with the idea of you know describing time travel I'm like ah and then from then you know this really somber kind of crushing beginnings of the movie 
um, you know, especially with Hawkeye's intro and, and his family and all, just to really kick him in the dick like the end of the previous film did and just to really, you know, by the way, everything's really bad. Beautif beautifully done. Um, to have Ant-Man's, uh, you know, coming up with the idea and them starting to think about that and it was very smart. It opened up a lot of opportunities for humor and to sort of lighten the mood, which was very well done um, without, you know, diminishing everything that's going on. You know, seeing Stark so thrashed after his near death um, and the what condition he was in when he came back and how they, you know, obviously emaciated him and had him all withdrawn and that, um, you know, CG. Again, throughout these Marvel movies, their use of CG to age and young and thin and bulk people and still make them look believable is just astounding. Um, you know, I, I raved and raved and raved with my original um, Infinity War review about what a just achievement of computer graphics that Thanos was. And I think he's unparalleled. Like, I don't think any other film has come close. And I think it'll be a long time until they do. And that didn't change. Um, I really got off point. But, yeah, the, the the story, the way it unfolds and all that, and then leading to bring Stark back in and all that, it's just beautiful. It's so well done. Stark having, you know, his family and not wanting to leave, but not being able to walk away from things and shit eating in his brain and, you know, him, him coming back. Obviously, Thor and where he went and that was funny, but kind of sad because he had his spirit broken by the events and all. And they obviously played it off in a very humorous way, but there was an underlying depression and, and sadness about him. Yeah, sadness about everyone. Everyone's struggling to deal with what happened and dealing with their own ways. Is uh, Everyone got their thing. Um, I love this movie that it's just about the Avengers. With Infinity War, they took the time to give everyone their moment in the, in the spotlight from all of the movies like Guardians and Doctor Strange and everyone outside of that core assembled Marvel Avengers thing. They all got their moment to shine. This movie, not so much, and I love it for that. They sort of all got their little moments throughout, but this was about the Avengers and the original cast of the Avengers, and I love that, because it was important, you know? They were the last ones standing at the end of the last movie, and they were the ones with the longer story arcs, and I love the fact that it was devoted to them, and, and heavily, and that, that's just great. Um, the time travel scenes, were incredible going back to previous moments from the Marvel Universe and integrated through that. The deeper you are with your Marvel 20 odd movies and TV shows, the more you'll appreciate from them. You know, seeing Jarvis with Howard Stark from the Agent, Agent Carter show was just great. And, you know, Peggy and just everybody, everybody back. Uh, ironically, or not ironically, but I think the only person that was not seen in the movie was Vision. You know, everybody else got to come back in some capacity, but he didn't, unless I missed it or something. I didn't. He wasn't there, which was a little sad for Paul Bettany because, you know, he was great and Vision was a great character, but everyone got brought back in different capacity and I guess it couldn't make sense to do that with him because he didn't have a form before Vision. Um, so th there wasn't anything to pull back on. Um, but everyone else brought back, you know. I toiled with, you know, Gamora. I think the way they worked Gamora back into the story and can let her continue with Guardians without diminishing the sacrifice of, her, of Thanos and how he got that Soul Stone was brilliant. Um, very, very well done. Um, you know, obviously, um, Nebula, really well handled. Um, everyone was really well handled. You know, those elements of it, the, the hilarity of obviously going back to that uh, attack from the original Avengers movie and them integrating through those scenes, seeing the S.H.I.E.L.D. dudes in an elevator with Cap sort of in a throwback to Winter Soldier, um, seeing them all go. Now, I... I feel i'm pretty sure obviously loki this made it that he can come back right because he bailed with the tesseract whereas in avengers one that film ended with thor making him grab that 
box or whatever the hell it was they're holding the house of Tesseract and he was taken back to Asgard but now he's escaped so I don't know whether that's you know obviously leading a path to the Loki TV show they talk about for Disney Plus but I like that but they didn't make such a big deal but again you know see what they did by bringing back everyone in a reasonable thing instead of just a I'm bringing everybody back who didn't die as a result of that click you know very smart very well done um, I love that. I love that Quill has to start with Gamora again. That you know their their reunion was getting kicked in the nuts. Was great. Um, yeah, it was all great. It was really really well done. Um, obviously, the Guardians they had very minimal part in the end of the film. Um, they had a few little glory moments, but not a lot. Um, I'm glad Captain Marvel wasn't used much. Uh, you know, she's not my favorite Marvel character. I think. You know, that movie is... I didn't even review that movie. I didn't really have a lot to say about it. I found it kind of underwhelming. And if Ben Mendelsohn and uh, Sam Jackson hadn't held that movie up, I think it would have been way worse for it. I think they carried that film, but whatever. But, you know, I was like, uh, my problem with her is she's kind of like Ray from these new Star Wars movies. She doesn't have a fault. She's unbeatable. She's kind of like just walking God mode. And I like the fact that, you know, she was gone for nearly all of the movie, came back to do her thing, but it still wasn't up to her to, to resolve things. I love the fact that it was left to the Avengers themselves. Um, and it's all over the place. Cap versus Cap fight was amazing. Humor in that was amazing. Um, Stark's moment with his dad was incredible. Uh, going back and working in to get back more of the pin juice. Like, everything was just so well thought of. The... the the brothers, the Russos and Fagy, just, I don't know they're ever going to get the credit they deserve for this universe, especially Fagy. Like, I, I can't compare it to George Lucas because he doesn't create. Like, Lucas created Star Wars and oversaw it. And what, how you feel about it up until he sold Disney where, he, you know, you think he went askew is irrelevant. The fact is that all came from his mind. And obviously a good portion of this came from Stan Lee um, and the other guys, but Fagy didn't write this, but he has 100% overseen a level of work and integrity and storytelling and narrative and interwoven things to reach a point better than anybody ever. If you talk about franchises, and especially with this no no franchises have this many movies like that guy needs to be put up on a pedestal and he needs to be recognized and respected for what he's done because it's masterful I, I, I can't get enough of that like I'm just the whole way through I was just blown away by how much work behind this film paid off and how it was structured the storyboarding and story charts and stuff they had to have structured out to make this movie work it's just beyond me. It's incredible. Um, I'm sure there's a million other things I should cover that I can't think of right now. I could go on all day about little funny moments and things, but really I want to experience them again, and you know what was good about it. Um, you know, the, I don't feel like nitpicking about anything. I feel like I'm amazed that they did this without me being like, piss off. They didn't do this, or they didn't do that, or whatever. Obviously... I thought Cap was going to die, um, whereas, you know, Stark did. That was beautifully done. It was a really nice outgoing. It was heartbreaking, and it was really sad to see, um, and, and just crushing the audience with that, and then making Cap, you know, it's over, but not just killing him and having two of them go, not stealing the spotlight from Stark's sacrifice. Again, really, really well done. Not sure how I feel about the passing of the shield, to um to his mate oh god my brain just shut down um flying guy you know you know who he is i was a bit like oh, i really really loved him to a scene at past the bucky i feel that maybe bucky's bucky's dark past would stop that and perhaps make it you know he's not as honorable a man and i get that but bucky has the same strength and he's you know got a really amazing story arc so i'm not sure i feel about that um, Falcon, God, nearly forgot that dude's name. Um, but 
again, I said I wouldn't nitpick and I almost did. So there you go. I loved it. It was great. I'm definitely going to see it again. Um, like I said, I think I've forgotten stuff I wanted to say, but it doesn't matter, man. Um, if I do need to say more, I'll do another one. So yeah, great. Good on them. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.